Hi, my name is Kirk Clore, and this is Michael White, and we're from Automatic Irrigation. We're here today to talk about how to program a Rainbird ESP ME controller. The Rainbird ESP ME controller is a modular controller that can be set from anywhere from 4 to 22 stations. It's pretty simple programming. It has a dial that you switch to whatever you want to change. It has arrows that you can use to switch between fields in your display, and a plus and minus button you use to change the values of the field. It's capable of running four different programs. To get to your different programs while programming, use this button right here, switch from programs A, B, C, and D. The basic things you need when you set a watering program are date and time, the, you need to set a start watering start time so the program knows when to start. You can set up to six on this particular controller. You need to set station run time so it knows how long to run each station and then you set your days of the week. Now all these basic things are the blue part of the dial. They're all in one half of the dial so they're nice and easy to find. When you get to the other half of the dial, there's some more advanced features which Michael's going to talk about. Okay, let's talk about the left hand <laughs> side of the dial. Uh, the first feature there would be the seasonal adjust. And the seasonal adjust is, is it can be adjusted by program. So if these typically are set up at Maybe some of the, the rotor zones are 30 minutes and the spray zones were at 10 minutes and it's getting a little dry. You can take the seasonal adjust, which will typically be at 100%. You can raise it up to 200% or if we're going, uh, maybe starting out in the spring or going into the fall and you want to reduce the amount of water you're applying, you can reduce it down to 5% of the actual run time that's programmed in there. So that would be the seasonal adjust. Uh, the next feature would be the um, uh, rain delay or watering delay, if you will. So, if you received the rain event this morning, and you say, "Okay, I don't want to, um, I, I don't want this to water for the next three days," you can go into the delay of watering button, and you can choose from one to 14 days. Um, make that adjustment, turn it back to the automatic position. The controller will wait that amount of time before it starts watering again. Okay. Uh, the next thing would be the rain sensor. This controller used to have a toggle button on the front of it where you could put it in the bypass mode. Uh, so if you came this afternoon, maybe it rained this morning, you came this afternoon and you want to service the system or make sure it's working, you could bypass it. Um, now it's actually uh, built, the gold uh, the selection there on the, on the left-hand side of the dial is where it's located. And you can actually put it in bypass mode or active mode where it actually reacts to whatever the rain sensor is telling it to do. And then the last thing would be the manual operation. Um, you can just choose it to manual operation, use your up and down or right to left arrows to pick the station you want, uh, and then enter the time you would like that to run. And that is just a manual program where you enter that, turn that back to the automatic position, and when it's done watering, um, that basically evaporates and goes away and it goes back to the, whatever was normally programmed. So let's go to some hidden features. There are also some hidden features that are available on this clock that aren't shown on the front of the dial. Rainbird provides a little card that lists all these rain or hidden features, so you want to make sure you don't throw that away when you're opening up the box. Um, all of these hidden features are, are accessed by turning the dial to a specific position. So we're going to start with the set station run times, and you hold the two arrow buttons for three seconds. When that, once that happens, it will go into the special hidden feature. This particular one allows you to turn the master valve on and off by the station. So now you can have different stations if you don't want them to, to obey the master valve for some reason, you can turn that off. If you go to the off position and go into this hidden features, you can set a delay time between watering stations. So if you, want, if you have some slow closing valves and you want to set 10 seconds between watering, you can do that. If you go to the rain sensor section, press both buttons, you will get into a rain sensor on off button by station. So now instead of just setting it for the whole controller, you can turn the rain sensor off for certain uh, stations like maybe a, something that's under an awning watering some plants that doesn't get affected by the rain. The test all station dial right here will save your contractor defaults. This is a big one. This is how once you get the thing set up the way you want to at a homeowner's place, if you do this, you will save whatever program you have in here. So that way when the homeowner messes with it, you can always fix it. You go to the advanced water cycle you press the two buttons and now your program is restored so just like that if you have problems you can even 
have a homeowner do this over the phone if you need to. Finally, if you go to the seasonal adjust and you hit both the buttons, you will go to a reset of the factory defaults. So if you really don't know what's changed in the clock and you can't figure it out, you can return it back to its normal state, out of the box state, and, and reprogram it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, one of the last great features of this controller. In the top right hand corner of the clock, there's a um, air detection LED light. It's a red light, if you will. It tells you two different things. You need to understand that if that light is blinking, that is trying to tell you there is a program error. So maybe you're missing a start time or missing a run time or you've not pro programmed any watering days. For some reason it's going to fail because of programming. So that is if the light is flashing. If the light is solid, you know that you have an electrical error. You could either have a zone that has become shorted, uh, it could be a pump or master valve circuit that, that has a problem of some kind, but you know at that point that you have an electrical troubleshooting problem uh, on your hands. Uh, so that's the difference between a solid light and a flashing light. Well, that covers the basics to the ESPME clock. There's a lot more detail you can find out. If you have any further questions, please give us a call at Automatic Irrigation. Thanks.